Hi guys. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. So I'm just going to play some music here while um I'm waiting for everyone to come on. And we're going to talk. We're going to talk. This is a song by Uche Agu. He's a Nigerian um, gospel artist. And the song is titled Rea Leboga. And he's just saying, I want to thank you, my Lord. So it's a, it's a song of thanksgiving to God. Enjoy. Sorts of things you do for me. Oh. I wanna thank you, Lord. Lord my God. I wanna thank you, Lord my God, for all the sorts of things you do for me. Oh. For all the sorts of things you do for me. I did you butter my bread, oh you sugar my tea. You bless me, never, never, oh, for all the sorts of things you do for me, oh, for all the sorts of things you do for me. When I count my blessings, oh, and name them one by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I cannot count them all, oh, Baba, hey, I cannot count them all, me all the bugger, moving up. Yalla <laughs> Jesus, so me, I go thank you forever for all the sorts of things you do for me. Oh, for all the sorts of things you do for me. For all the sorts of things you do for me. For all the sorts of. For all the sorts of things you do for me, for all the sorts of things you do for me, for all the sorts of things you do for me. All right, guys, I think we're just going to go ahead and start. I don't want this to be a very long video. I don't want this to be a very long video. So today we're, just, we're going to be talking about... The importance of a having a daily prayer covering over your family and over your loved ones. Okay, this is this is one of those things where um, you can't you cannot overemphasize um, the value of this. You know, we're we're living in the end times, and there 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 are, there are different forms of attacks that are thrown our way every single day and it's not just attacks that are thrown our way but attacks that our family members are facing and if something is affecting your family member or something is affecting your loved one it is affecting you as well so uh, we're going to talk about that and you know how not just the importance of but also how you can ensure that there is that daily prayer covering over your family and over your loved ones and as you come in um please share the video um this is a very very important topic and this is i feel like this is inf information that um everybody needs to know you know and um 
You never know. You never know the the the, the, the that one that single prayer that you pray over a family member. You never know the attacks. Uh, that the enemy was planning or that the enemy was sending their way when you prayed that prayer or the, the attacks that it's going to prevent, that prayer is going to prevent from happening. So it's important as Christians that we stay on the high alert. We stay on the high alert, not just for ourselves, but for our families as well. You know, if, it, it doesn't matter if you're the only Christian in your family, then it is your role. Uh, um, assume the role of an intercessor for your family and for your loved ones and just know you know that that is you've been called you've been called to stand in the gap for your family it it may not be easy they may not recognize the significance or the importance of it but you are doing you're doing a, a very you're carrying out a very important task you know not just covering yourself but standing in the gap for your family as well now one thing we need to also understand is having a family in itself is a blessing guys having a family in itself is a blessing i did um a video a couple of weeks ago about the the importance of just having a being grateful the importance of being grateful to god for those things that you have in in as much as you're asking god for other stuff be grateful for those things that you have and family is one of those things we cannot overemphasize the importance of that if you have a family be grateful because not everybody you know can can boast of having a family if you have a family that is loving you have a family that is understanding be grateful for that guys and and I know that family members can get on our very last nerve. They can be those people that will stand on that last nerve, not just stand on it, but jump on that last nerve that you at times you're just like, maybe it's better to not even have a family. No, guys, if you have a family, as annoying as they may be sometimes, as um, nerve-wracking as the, the relationship with them could be sometimes, be grateful for that. Okay. Now, uh, uh, you could have a father, a mother, sibling, husbands, uh, uh, kids, any of those. Or if you have all of those, that is a blessing. If you're able to pick up your phone, uh, and dial, uh, uh, maybe your mom's number and call them and the answer on the other end, it is a blessing. You're able to pick up the phone and dial your dad's number, call them and the answer on the other end. It is a blessing and do not take that for granted. Okay, I feel like it's very important that we lay that foundation before we start talking about the importance of praying for them and covering for them. Okay, no matter how tense that relationship may be with them, it could, maybe you're a believer and they are not they are not believers, and 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 that 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 could cause tension sometimes in 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 the home or in the in the family relationship. But always remember that it is your role as a believer to pray for them. Even more so, if you're the only one that is a believer in your family, it is your role to stand as an intercessor and pray. The Bible, the Bible says in the book of Acts that we are saved with our household. We are saved with our household. As you're praying for your, 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 your sisters, you're praying for your brothers, you're praying for your parents, remember that. Just hold on to that word. Hold on to that scripture that you're saved with your household. Okay. And as long as they're still alive, there is hope. There is always hope that that relationship could be mended, especially if you keep praying for them, if you keep standing in the gap for them, because that's one of the key things, you know, talking about praying for your family members, that's one of the key things, praying for their salvation. There is no greater gift. There is no better gift that you can give somebody Besides, you know, standing in the gap for them, interceding for them, praying for them, especially, especially if they're not saved, guys. We, we, we need to um, make sure that uh, we're, we're doing that. There are so many testimonies, so many stories of people who stood in the gap for their family members. And it could take years, you know. Um, for example, this, this man of God, Jesse Duplantis, I was w um, watching one of his messages and he was talking about how his mom stood in the gap and prayed for him for years and years and years for him to get saved. Now she could get, you know, discouraged. She, I'm sure she, she got discouraged at some point. I'm not saying you cannot get discouraged or you shouldn't get discouraged, but don't stay discouraged. Do not stay di discouraged and forget, you know, the importance of that role of um, standing in the gap for that family member or for that loved one. Jesse DePlantis' mom, she, she, she stood in the gap. She, 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 she stayed on her knees for, for her son and, and prayed and, Today he's one of the he's one of the most celebrated men of God um, in the world, and 
Think of the number of souls that God has used Jesse Duplantis to save or the number of people um, that have made it to heaven as a result of Jesse Duplantis' ministry. If his mom got discouraged and just gave up, if his mom got discouraged and just gave up. So keep that in your mind, you know, have that in perspective as you, as you continue to stand in the gap for your family members and pray that, you know, those tense relationships, those difficult relationships, um, start being on the mend. And you could be one of those very fortunate ones or one of those really blessed ones who has an amazing family. You know, you're, you're, you're fine with all of your siblings. You're fine with all of your parents. You're all born again. You're, you know, you have, you have an excellent relationship with them. Do not take that for granted. Do not take that for granted. You do not fold your arms and sit just because you have those, you know, you have that amazing relationship with your family members because the devil is on the prowl guys. Like as, as, as um, unfortunate as that sounds, but the devil is busy. So make sure you're standing in the gap. You're praying for them on a daily basis. You're praying for your family. You're praying for your siblings. You're praying for your parents. You're praying for your children. You're praying for your children. I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. I cannot emphasize this enough. Stand in the gap for your children on a daily basis. As they are stepping outside the house, lay your hands on their head and speak. A, 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 a spiritual covering over them. Plead the blood of Jesus over their lives as they go to school, as they go to hang out with friends, wherever they go. And there is no age limit to this. You don't do this just when they, they, they are still, you know, young or when they are still little. Even when they are grown, it's your role as a parent to provide or, or to stand in the gap for them and provide that spiritual covering for them. Because... You never know when that will come in handy. You never know when that will come in handy. So it's very, it's very, very important. I could not emphasize this enough. And um, like I said, the book of Acts, I'll just read exactly what it says. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household, you and your household, this gift, this blessing is not just for you. It's for you and your household. You know, you're, you're praying the prayer of salvation for them you know, um, interceding for them and asking God to, um, touch their hearts that they will, they will repent and they'll come to know him. And besides that, you're praying the prayer of blessing. I'll just read the prayer of blessings in number six, verse 24 to 26. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Pray this prayer over each and every one of your family members. Pray this prayer over your children. That prayer of blessing, they need it on a daily basis as they go out. That God will meet them at the point of their need. That God will bless their going out, bless their coming in. There's a plethora of scriptures. There's a plethora of scriptures on blessings that you can proclaim over, over your family. And this was a habit. Um, this, this was a habit that the Israelites had. You know, this was a habit that the Israelites had just, uh, um, uh, proclaiming these blessings over each other, proclaiming these blessings over, over their children. And as children of Abraham that we are as Christians, we need to make sure that we are also, um, we're also practicing these things and make it, do it to the point where it becomes a habit, not just for you, your children will grow up knowing that this is a part of the daily routine. This is a part of the daily routine, standing um, with their parents in prayer, receiving that prayer covering, and just going out and basking in the glory of God. This is very, very important. And you know, like even as you, some of these prayers are very general. Sometimes there's, there could be a specific family member that, you know, you could take more time and pray some of these prayers for. Like for example, the prayer of salvation. Maybe, you know, you have one specific family member that is not saved yet. And, um, you could just take some more time and pray that prayer of salvation over, over that family member, trusting God that they will not perish, trusting God that they will not perish. That's a prayer that I pray over each and every one of my family members that none of them will die without receiving Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and savior. 
that none of them will die. I pray that prayer on a constant basis. It is a routine now. Every time I pray for each and every one of my family members, I decree and I declare, and I have that authority, not have not having the authority in myself, but having that authority in Christ Jesus, you know, to make those proclamations, to make those declarations, you know, that your family members will not perish without um, being saved. So we need to make sure that we're doing this. And then even the prayer of protection, pleading the blood of Jesus over, over, over your family. What, what does that mean to plead the blood of Jesus? I feel like as Christians, sometimes we, we get used to some of these things that they, they, it's almost like they start losing that wow factor, you know, like you, you, you get born again and you hear every time, every day, oh, plead the, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. What, what does that really mean? Um, about pleading the blood of Jesus. So it's, it's taking the blood of Jesus, the power that is in the blood of Jesus and applying it to any situation, taking the power that is in the blood of Jesus and applying it to any situation. And in this instance, applying it over your family and over your loved ones. Okay. Now the, the enemy's attacks are often relentless and more often than not, you don't get a warning. You know, if you're very, if you're sensitive spiritually, you could, you could sense it coming or you could have a dream or something like that. But a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, in the middle of these attacks, wondering how, how did I get here? How did this happen? You know, and things like that. You get attacks on your home, you get attacks on your finances, you get attacks on your health, you get attacks even on your morality, you know, through, through, through temptation, the constant temptations that you have to fight. And this is not just, and, and the attack sometimes is not, uh, is not directed at you personally. The attacks could be directed at your family members, but because you love your family members, you're affected. And there's, so, there, there's times when the enemy will attack you through your family members, attack you by at attacking your family members, knowing that if your family members are attacked, your peace is affected. You know, so praying for your family members and, and ensuring that that prayer covering is over them, you're also ensuring that your peace is kept intact. Because if they're affected, you are affected one way or the other. You are affected one way or the other. So we need, we need, we need to have these, these things in mind, um, guys. Um, the, the Bible tells us in so many places about the power that is in the blood of Jesus. The book of Revelations in chapter 12, verse 11, it says that believers overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. You overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the words of your testimony. That in itself should let you know the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And there's times when maybe you don't have time to play, pray like a long drawn out prayer. Just plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Plead the blood of Jesus over your family. Plead the blood, call them by name. Like I, I do that a lot, you know, call each and every um, a, a member of my family by name, you plead the blood of Jesus over your kids, call them by name, cover them with the blood of Jesus, cover, you know, if, if your kids are, are going to school, you cover the school bus, if they're entering the school bus, you cover the school bus with the blood of Jesus, you cover their classroom with the blood, I do that, you cover their classroom with the blood of Jesus, you, 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 you cover their teachers with the blood of Jesus, anything that could affect your children, anything that could affect you, cover cover it with the blood of jesus you know and 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 sometimes when you hear plead the blood of jesus it sounds almost like you're are, are you begging no like it's not in essence begging you know it's kind of like you have a, a lawyer pleading the case for their client before a judge you know a lawyer pleading a case for their client in front of a judge in this case God is our judge. God is that judge. I remember the Bible tells us that the devil accuses. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser of the brethren. He constantly accuses us before God. And what is our defense? What is our defense? We are covered in the blood of Jesus. That is the only defense that you need. As a believer, as a Christian, that's the only defense that you need. And if you're not born again yet, use this as, as an opportunity. Pray that prayer you know, um, renounce, you renounce every, uh, your sins, you know, and receive Jesus Christ in, in your life as your personal Lord and savior so that you can, you can receive some of these benefits. These are some of the benefits that you get, you know, as a Christian.
plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus, guys, over your life. Plead the blood of Jesus over your family. Plead the blood of Jesus over your loved ones. Plead the blood of Jesus over... I play a brother Jesus sometimes even over my co-workers. You know, there are some co-workers that will try you. You know, there are some co-workers that will try you. There are, you have patients that will try you. You, you have, you know, if, if, if people that you meet, random people that you meet, you know, that one way or the other could affect your peace or that could affect your, 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 your state of mind. You, I, I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm very generous with the blood of Jesus, guys. And I feel like as Christians, as as Christians, we, we should take advantage of of some of these um I don't want to say resources, but some of these um, blessings that are available to us. Because the blood of Jesus covers, it covers it all. It covers it all. Okay. Um, you have protection in the blood of Jesus. You have deliverance in the blood of Jesus. You have uh, 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 confidence, like confidence in the blood of Jesus. There, I have. I've been in so many situations where I'm nervous. I, I've been in so many situations where I'm worried, anxiety. I can feel anxiety literally setting in. I start pleading the blood of Jesus. I start pleading the blood of Jesus. It is not in short supply. So make use of it. As your children walk out the door, lay your hands on their heads and decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over Noya. I plead the blood of Jesus over Dahlia. As you're driving to work, as you're driving to meet that client, as you're driving for that appointment, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over this vehicle, especially if you're traveling. Especially if you're traveling, um, I, you plead the blood of Jesus over the vehicle and over all those that are in the vehicle. If you're taking public transportation, if you're flying, plead the blood of Jesus over that plane. Decree and declare we will go and we will return safely. You know, plead the blood of Jesus over your health. Plead the blood of Jesus over the health of your family members. Plead the blood of Jesus over your relationships. Ensure that there's that prayer covering over not just your life, but over, I mean, and, and, and your family members, that's an extension of your life. So if you're praying that, 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 and, and ensuring that that covering is over your life, you have to make sure that you're also praying and ensuring that that covering is over your family and over your family members. Okay. So I don't want to, I don't want to make this, um, a very long message. Like I said, please share, you know, share, share, share on your, on your timeline. You never know who's going to listen to this, but we need to make sure that we are, there's so like, there's, there's crazy stuff happening guys. Like I, I, I was sharing with a couple of my friends uh, some weeks ago that these days uh, I, I, I don't even want to turn on the, the news. I don't even want to watch the news because it's depressing. It's depressing. You know, there's just the, the different attacks you know, on, on people, the different attacks on, on nations, on countries, the, just the difficulties that people are going through. It's depressing to watch, you know, but we need to understand that as Christians, we are called to be intercessors. As Christians, we are called to stand in the gap, stand in the gap for your family as difficult or as depressing as the situation in your family could be in terms of your relationship with your family members do not give up hope do not give up hope uh, uh, decide decide resolve in yourself that you will stand in the gap for your family members until each and every one of them are saved, you resolve that you will be that person in your family that is the intercessor that is covering and sharing that every one of them is covered in the blood of Jesus. As your day starts, I do that typically in the mornings. And then sometimes you could get a prompting from the Holy Spirit as well. You know, it could be during the day at some point you get a prompting, you know, a family member comes to your mind, pray for them and ensure that that covering is over their lives. This is so important, guys. Make sure you're doing this on a daily basis. 
as I'm stepping out the door, I'm decreeing and declaring, I shut the door to any form of attack over my family. I shut the door to any, 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 any scheme or any maneuver from the kingdom of darkness over my family. I saturate my family with the blood of Jesus. I surround them with a hedge of fire of the Holy Spirit. Today, I shut my ears to bad news. I will not hear bad news in the mighty name of Jesus. As I'm driving to work, I am decreeing, I am declaring. Favor is my name. Favor is my portion. Uh, you, you are decreeing and declaring that over your kids as well. You're decreeing and declaring that over your, your, your parents. Good health is theirs in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Surround them with a prayer covering. Let this become a habit. Let this become a habit. And this is the beginning of the year. And, and we're, we're big on, you know, creating new habits. Um, lifestyle goals, you know, trying to be healthy, trying to lose weight, trying to, uh, um, uh, be healthy financially as well. Just, just different areas of our lives. You know, this make sure that as you are making these goals on the different areas of your life, that you're not forgetting the spiritual, you're not forgetting the spiritual aspect of it. The fact that you, you, whatever you see, physically is as a result of what has already happened spiritually. So being able to pray as a Christian, being able to make these declarations as a Christian, this is you influencing what you're going to see happen in the physical. This is you influencing. This is you making sure that, um, uh, uh your, your input, your, you, you, making sure that your input is taken into consideration on on the things that are happening in the physical in your life otherwise the enemy will mess you up because he's alive and well and it's like i said earlier on we're living in the end times and the devil is very busy he's very busy guys so make sure like if you're living in an apartment complex you're covering that with the blood of jesus if you're living in it, it could be a home your own home that you bought you're covering that with the blood of jesus Setting those spiritual boundaries, setting those spiritual boundaries on the things that um, um, you want to permit in your environment. You have that authority as a, as, as, uh, you know, as a child of God. I know uh, I may sound a little bit extreme right now, but trust me, guys, this is important. You, you could be like, oh man, she's one of those fanatics. Yes, I'm a Jesus fanatic and I am not, I am not ashamed of that. You know, so make sure, make sure that we're, we're covering our, our loved ones with the blood of Jesus. Make sure that you're covering, um, your friends, you're covering your children, um, with the blood of Jesus. You're covering your, your parents, your siblings with the blood of Jesus. All right, guys, that, that is it for today. Like I said earlier on, I didn't want, I didn't want it to be a long drawn out video. Please make sure you're sharing this with, um, those on your timeline, you never know who, who needs to hear this today and you never know, um, you know, whose life will be saved by, by this, you know, by somebody that has heard this and then covers, uh, follows the instruction to cover their family and their loved ones with the blood of Jesus. Thank you all so much. God bless you. And, um, we're starting a new week and the prayer is that your, your your week will be blessed and your month will be will be blessed as well that it will definitely be a better month than the month of january i don't know the struggles that you experienced in the month of january but whatever um whatever it is we pray that this month of february will be better for you and not just for you but for your loved ones as well god bless you all and have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day bye bye